Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. Today we're going to be looking at, or more accurately, listening to the International Space Station. Specifically, we're listening to the amateur radio repeater that's orbiting up there with the space station, and that lets ground-based hams or radio amateurs communicate with each other for much longer distances, because you can essentially bounce your signal off the space station and back down to Earth, covering much more distance than just a ground-based antenna. We won't be doing any transmitting. I do have a ham license, but I don't have the proper antenna to transmit up to the station. Instead, we're just going to be listening to it. And there are a couple ways to do this. The easiest is with just a very cheap radio that you can get on Amazon or eBay. These things are like $25 to $30. If you're going to be transmitting with one of these, you need a license and or you need to know what you're doing because you can get into trouble with these. But for just listening, this is one of the cheapest ways to get a wideband radio receiver or scanner. They're not always ideal as a scanner, but they sure are cheap. So again, the very easiest way to hear the space station is to take one of your radios here, tune it to the right frequency, and wait for the station to pass overhead. The one I'm going to be using is 437.8 MHz, and that is the main UHF ham radio downlink that's cross-connected over to a VHF uplink. This is what's known as a crossband repeater, so it's 2 meter VHF going up, 70 centimeter or UHF coming down. And these little radios can do both. To find out when the station is coming over and where to look for it or where to aim your antenna, I use this other website. And this gives you information on all sorts of satellites, but what we're looking for here is the International Space Station. I'd click on 10 day predictions to find out when it's coming over next. And you want to make sure to click on all passes, not just visible passes. Yeah, it's cool to see the station going overhead when the sun's reflecting off the solar panels, but to hear it on the radio, you don't necessarily need a visible pass. Once you know when it's coming over, you usually have something like a 10 minute window in which you can hear it. Personally, I notice that I hear it better in the middle of the window when the station is right overhead, or towards the end of the window when it's going away from me. That might just be relating to how the antennas are positioned, or maybe there are more radio users out to the east of me than to the west. I'm not quite sure. So again, the very easiest way to do this is tune your radio to 437.8, find the time when it's coming over, hold down your monitor button on the side, or set your squelch to zero so you can hear very faint signals, and somewhere in that window of time when the station is passing overhead, you should be hearing hams calling out to each other. Uh, yeah, zero L, W A zero D, Whiskey Alpha Zero Delta Echo Mike One Two, QSL. Whiskey Delta Mike Zero One Two, Victor Echo Four, November Oscar. Roger, roger. Thank you. Uh, have a good evening there. WA0D. They'll mostly be using military-style phonetic call signs, and you might hear other things like grid references or requests for QSL, which is kind of like a collectible postcard that hams send each other when they get a good contact. Kilo Oscar 4, Mike, 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 Echo Mike 55. Kilo Oscar 4, Mike, Echo Mike, this is... All right, so that was the very easiest way to do this. We're going to do a couple other things. The next slightly more complicated way is to program in several different frequencies into your memory on 5 kilohertz steps. Because the station is moving at orbital speed, you get a little bit of Doppler shift, meaning that the frequency is a little bit higher when the station is moving towards you and a little bit lower when it's moving away from you. So if you program in five different memory banks with five different frequencies, again, five kilohertz apart, set them up as something like ISS 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then as the station passes overhead, about every two minutes during that pass, you'll increment up through one of your memory channels, and that should get you a little bit better reception than just listening on the center frequency. Some other things you can do to improve reception are to get a nicer antenna, this one is a Nagoya NA771, and it's optimized for 2 meter and 70 centimeter ham bands. So this is kind of a nice one for hearing fainter signals. And then the other thing we can try is to switch over to a directional antenna. This isn't strictly necessary. The space station repeater is pretty powerful, and you can hear it just fine on the little rubber ducky antennas like those handheld radios come with. But if we want to get into any other satellites in the future, I want to get some experience using that directional antenna finding out how it works, how to aim it, and maybe we can do something else cool with it later on. Now, I've got this commercial band UHF Yagi or Yagi antenna. I don't actually know how to pronounce it. This thing is tuned to about 450 megahertz. We want it in 437 megahertz, or thereabouts, and I think I can retune it with the help of my little Nano VNA that I picked up on Amazon. 
If I haven't shown this thing before on this channel, it's a really cool little device. These only cost about $40 on Amazon or eBay, and they're basically an all-in-one antenna tuner, antenna analyzer, power meter. They can do all kinds of cool stuff for your radios. I don't even know how to use all the functions on this. Normally, I just use it for tuning antennas. Now, to do that, we need to hook up our antenna to this zero port here. We'll turn on our meter. And we see the SWR, or standing wave ratio, of this antenna across a selected spectrum. So you might see that little triangle moving on the screen. So right now, the very lowest part of the graph, which corresponds to basically the least interference, uh, least reflected feedback, and best performance, is right at 441 megahertz. Now, if I were using the Nano VNA for the first time, there are some additional calibration steps to make sure it's accurate, but I just used it for another project, so I'm going to assume this is pretty reliable right now. Now, you'll notice the graph changes a bit if I pick up the antenna off the floor here and move it around, so it is still showing the best SWR around that 440 or so, but we should make sure to tune it while we're actually holding it in the air, because that's how I'm actually going to use it. It's not going to be set on something, it's not going to have a ground plane underneath it, I'm going to be using this handheld, so we'll tune it uh, with that in mind. So to adjust the tuning on this particular antenna, we need to loosen up each side of this little bar, and we can slide it in and out across these elements. And we'll need one of these microscopic Allen wrenches that electronics engineers love and everyone else hates. So we just need to loosen up both sides here, and then we slide this back and forth until we get the ideal SWR down at that 437 megahertz range that we're looking for. All right, that's looking pretty good. So the space station is definitely easier to see and to track visually in early morning and late evening, because while it's just getting dark here on the ground, the station is still in daylight, so you can see it as a bright dot moving overhead. Now that isn't the only time you can hear it, because it's passing overhead in the daytime in the middle of the night as well. In fact, we've got a pass coming up here in a few minutes, so we'll see what we can hear. We'll have to use the little app on my phone to track where it is and aim the antenna, because it's still daylight and we won't be able to actually see it. November Alpha 1, Sierra, Sierra. Kilo Lima 7, Kilo Tango, Oscar. WA2FHJ, Fox, November 1, WB. From India, EN42. All right, we're out here trying this again. It looks like the space station is just coming over the horizon that away. All right, well, I've just managed to factory reset my radio while trying to change the squelch settings. That's the downside of these little imported radios. The controls are terrible, the menu interface is terrible. You never want to change anything with the little on screen menu, so. I guess I'm missing this pass. Now eventually what I really want is an automated tracking system like this. An antenna aimer, my Yagi antenna, It'd be nice to have computer-controlled aiming so I don't have to sit there aiming the antenna by hand. Now this particular antenna pointer that I have right now isn't ideal for this. It doesn't go as high in the elevation axis as I want. It's not very fast. It's not automatic. This is actually a manually controlled aimer right now. And this is actually just an old security camera PTZ mount. It's not really an antenna aimer. Now again, why am I going to all this trouble if I said earlier that you can hear the space station with just your regular rubber ducky antenna on top of the radio? Well, I'm trying to build up experience and build up knowledge. I'd like to start looking at fainter satellites, other ham sats, cube sats, things like that that I can't just pick up with the stock antenna on the cheap radio. I want to figure out how can I do computer controlled aiming, how can I put in orbital elements to my computer and have it automatically track things. Those are all things I don't quite understand, I don't know how to do, but I'd like to learn. So I'm starting from the bottom, I'm working my way up, I'm playing around with all the garbage that I already have to try to figure out what things can I do with it, what things can't I do with it, do I need to buy different equipment, do I need to make different equipment. It's all kind of a learning process for me. Now something I could do with this is to actually tilt the tripod that it's on. That's right, it's another extremely professional antenna mount courtesy of Save It For Parts. Now with even more pitchfork. Hey, Victor, Sierra, okay. 
it's warm out there. That's the other reason I like to do these in the evening and the morning. Not only is the station visible, but the temperature is a lot more comfortable for me. Anyway, uh, we're going to wrap up this video. I've shown a couple ways to listen to the space station. The easy way with just the handheld radio, all the way up to the ridiculous way with the directional antenna and the motorized rotor and the software to find radio on the cyber deck. That's going really over the top. Like I said, all you really need is the little handheld radio. I'm just trying out some of these more complex things so that I have a basic knowledge base. I tried to do this video somewhat as a how-to, but I'm learning these things right along with you guys. So if I make any mistakes, if I say anything wrong, I apologize for that. There's plenty of resources out there on the internet to teach you more about this stuff, and I will throw some of those down in the description below. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time. Victor Echo 4, November WA0D, Whiskey Alpha 0, Delta Echo Mike 1, 2, QSL. Delta Mike 0, 1, 2, Victor Echo 4, November Oscar. EN 19. Roger, roger. Thank you. Uh, have a good evening there. WA0D.